Hey guys, hey, we just had a live training event last night about TXVs, and I reviewed that video and I didn't really make it clear the opening and closing forces and how they work together to maintain a constant superheat. So I'm going to shoot a couple videos that just that is dedicated to that only. So as a review, the TXV has one opening force and two closing forces to maintain the constant superheat. So the first thing we're going to do in the first video we're going to talk about this TXV is just two of those forces. That would be the opening force, which is the bulb pressure right here, and the closing force, which is the suction line pressure uh, represented by the, the uh, blue with the red, red dots here. We have removed the superheat spring, so we're going to assume there's no superheat spring and magically this this works together and will slide up and down. So we have our magnifying glass at, on this TXV. That's what we're looking at over here. And this bulb here is represented down below. So let's assume that the system is off and we have the room is 75 degrees and then it's calling for heat or for cooling. Sorry about that. I don't know where that heat came from. Um, it's calling for cooling. So this 75 degree air blows all the way across this evaporator coil. And when it does, there, it is 75 degrees across the entire coil on initial startup. So this bulb, this sensing bulb right here, is sensing 75 degree Fahrenheit suction line temperature. This and that and this bulb is the same as this bulb, so this is sensing 75 degrees. So what is our opening force? What is our opening pressure here? Let's take a look. All right, here's our pressure temperature chart. This is a uh, R22 system, so we have 75 degree air. So here's our temperature column. Let's find 75. We follow that, that over to the green column, and that's 132 psi. R22 is 132 psi at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the refrigerant in this bulb is 132 psig. And that is our opening force, 132 PSIG on the top of the diaphragm on the TXV. Now the, the compressor has now started. We have some refrigerant flowing through this TXV. And after a few minutes, this coil temperature might raise up a bit. Let's say the coil temperature is now 60 degrees and the sensing bulb is 60 degrees and if we take a look at what 60 degrees pressure is the relationship the PT relationship is between that let's look at 60 now it's 102 PSIG. So now the system's running and we're at 60 degrees Fahrenheit here. And what did we say that was? Sixty degrees Fahrenheit hundred and two. So it is 102 PSIG in this bulb and in this suction line at 60 degrees this, that suction pressure is 102 PSIG as well so our opening and closing forces no matter what happens balance they are balanced out with equal force 102 up here on the sensing bulb and 102 down below here 
on the suction pressure. Now I don't know what would happen if you just took that spring out and you could make this work, but no matter what happened, these would these would chase each other and how whatever mechanical things happen inside this TXV, eventually it would reach an equilibrium and the pressures would always be the same on either side. So we can't maintain superheat or any other um, properties of a TXV. But you can see that if we just have one opening force, which is the bulb pressure, and one closing force, which is the suction line pressure, they will eventually, after running, even out so that the pressure inside of the bulb and the pressure inside of the suction line, the temperatures and pressures are the same. And then we just, it just has no superheat whatsoever, none, because we, it doesn't matter whether it's 40 degrees up here, here, or here, it's always going to, that pressure is always going to be the same at this point, which means the temperature will always be the same at this point, and you, you will have no superheat. You might have some refrigeration, you will be probably flooding the compressor, and that is what would happen if we did not have any type of superheat spring. All right, so we just saw why you have to have a superheat spring. So we'll make some assumptions here. Let's just assume that however the design is, that everything equals out and balances out at 40 degrees Fahrenheit on the outlet of the evaporator. So we've got 40 degrees Fahrenheit on the bulb, 40 degree Fahrenheit refrigerant in the suction line. So 40 degrees, let's find it on our chart here, is 67, 68.5 PSIG. So at 67 PSIG, both in the sensing bulb and the e evaporator line, we have 67 PSIG at the, as the closing force, 67 PSIG as the opening force, and we have no superheat whatsoever at this point.